anyone's fun. I'm not a fun ruiner for the most part, but have you heard about the diarrhea superbug? It's going around our studio, actually. Uh, yeah. The CDC issued a warning identifying a diarrhea superbug. It's called Shigella, which I thought was a Jewish holiday. I mean, <laughs> You coming for Shigella? No. But it's not. Shigella is one of the most common sources of diarrhea in the world, just after Chipotle. And so the CDC has released some guidelines on how to know if you have it, and they've asked me to read them to help get the word out. So, uh, well, number one, if you're climbing up a ladder and you feel something splatter, it's diarrhea. <laughs> cha, cha, cha. Number two, if you're running down the hall and you feel something fall, it's diarrhea. Cha, cha, cha. Not sure why they added the cha-cha-chas, but uh, number three, if you're sliding in a first and you feel something bursts, it's diarrhea. Cha-cha-cha. That one feels overly specific to baseball players, so we're just, we'll just post the rest on our website because we got to keep this show moving. We can't stop and devote a whole show to diarrhea. Right, Guillermo? Right, Jimmy. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, now, speaking yes. of diarrhea, Tucker Carlson of Fox News, <laughs> yesterday, we learned that the... Um, the Department of Energy, you probably know about this, believes with what they described as low confidence that COVID may have leaked from a lab in China. Eight federal agencies now have weighed in with their assessments. Four believe COVID came from natural transmission. Two say it was a lab leak, and two are still undecided. In other words, we don't know. But the dingbats now see this as some kind of proof that they were right, that the virus came from a Chinese leak at a laboratory, which, by the way, it might have. The point is, we didn't know then. We still don't know now. But what we did know is that Trump and his buddies blaming the Chinese resulted in a great deal of anti-Asian American sentiment and even violence in this country. And that's why it was irresponsible for the president to call it the China virus. But Tucker Carlson apparently disagrees. This plague should never have happened. It could have been stopped. But people chose not to stop it. <laughs> what people? Tomorrow he'll blame the Spanish flu on Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Imagine if you're a comedian and all of a sudden your cue card has all kinds of talking points from politicians and foreign governments on it. Don't read it. You degrade yourself. And you become complicit in the greatest crime in history. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, the idea... <laughs> that this man would accuse, that I would be accused of reading talking points from foreign governments. If it weren't so brazen, it would almost be funny coming from this loathsome, un-American Moscow mule. Wait a second, why is it disloyal to side with Russia, but loyal to side with Ukraine? What is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? So, I mean, I should say for the record, I'm totally opposed to, the, to these sanctions, and, and I, I don't think that we should be at war with Russia, and I, I think we should probably take the side of, of, of Russia. Is he making fentanyl? Is he trying to snuff out Christianity? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Why would we take important. Ukraine, but hold on, why would we take Ukraine's side and not Russia's side? There he is, Putin's favorite little nesting doll, accusing me <laughs> of taking orders from a foreign government. You know the reason they call him Tucker? Is in high school, um, he liked to get naked and tuck his like Christmas ornaments. <laughs> and, then, and he would prance around in front of his grandparents. And they started calling him Tucker. And that's what my Chinese intelligence tells me anyway. <laughs> The good news, I guess, is that Tucker doesn't actually believe uh, much of what he says. Rupert Murdoch just admitted that during the election in 2020, Tucker and Hannity were on camera stoking claims of voter fraud while privately texting each other, saying they knew they weren't true. Three years later, Fox finally told the truth about how much they lie because they had to in court. There were two stories. In one, Rupert Murdoch acknowledged that Fox News hosts knowingly endorsed false stolen election claims. And in another, they leaked confidential information about Biden's campaign ads to Jared Kushner. Two very big stories that most certainly had a negative and long-lasting impact on our democracy. So let's see how Fox News covered those stories today. Your giggling Vice President Kamala Harris strikes again, this time speaking in South Carolina about high-speed internet. She broke into a, another one of those bizarre laughing fits. What were the seven dwarves' names? Angry? A city council meeting in Washington state was stopped multiple times by a cat constituent. The feisty feline interrupted everyone. From Sweet Home Alabama to Sweet Florida, Leonard Skinner is still changing the course of music history. A TikTok user asked an AI program to generate two cocktails based on names he gave. 
Well, it turns out leprechauns exist not just on cereal boxes. There are a lot of people who believe they have seen a leprechaun, or is there known in some countries as an elf? The Pennsylvania teen slathered the entire kitchen in peanut butter. That wasn't the first time. Apparently, he did this three months ago. He did the entire bathroom in peanut butter. I, I hope it was peanut butter. Could have been that diarrhea superbug. <laughs> there was no mention of any of this on Fox News today. And here's the thing. The reason they're keeping this quiet, I know this is going to be a shock, is because Fox News lied to us. <laughs> oh, my God. Guillermo... Are you okay? Yeah, sorry, I just drunk, Jimmy. Oh, you're drunk, okay. No. <laughs> of course, our crazy ex-president had to weigh in on the uh, Fox News news. He wrote, why is Rupert Murdoch throwing his anchors under the table, which also happens to be killing his case and infuriating his viewers, who will again be leaving in droves. They already are. There's massive evidence of voter fraud and irregularities in the presidential election. Just look at the documentary, 2,000 Mules. You will see large-scale ballot stuffing caught on government cameras. Our votes cast without legislature's approval or just recently the FBI Twitter file scandal. Rigged! That's how he ends every letter now. <laughs> Happy birthday, Eric. Rigged! <laughs> Now Fox is fake news, too. Will somebody get this man some Metamucil? His toilet tweets are going on way too long. <laughs> Today in Washington, the Justice Department briefed the congressional gang of eight, as they are known, on the investigations into the Trump, Pence, and Biden classified document situation. The gang of eight is made up of top Democrats and Republicans from both chambers. You can recognize they all have a little teardrop tattoo under their eyes. <laughs> We've not heard any indication of what is in those documents yet. Uh, that Trump had in his golf bag and Biden had in the glove box of his Corvette. But I thought this was interesting. The officials handling the documents are so familiar with them at this point, they can identify them by smell. Biden smell like Ben Gay. Trump's um, smell like popcorn shrimp. And Mike Pence's smell like Mother uh, Liz Claiborne perfume. <laughs> but, you know, I... <laughs> Thank you, I... I did a lot of research to arrive at that particular perfume. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene's not part of the Gang of Eight, thank goodness, but she had a busy night. She went on Twitter to announce, I was attacked in a restaurant tonight by an insane woman and screamed at her by her adult son. They had no respect for the restaurant, the staff, the other people dining, or people like me who simply have different political views. They are self-righteous, insane, and completely out of control. I was sitting at my table working with my staff, never even noticed these people until they turned into demons. <laughs> people used to respect others, even if they had different views. Not anymore. Our country is gone, said the woman who literally screamed at the president during his State of the <laughs> Union speech. But she was attacked, attacked by, right, by an insane woman. The woman who attacked her was insane. You know how dogs sometimes see themselves in a mirror and they think it's another dog? <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene is not the only rat in the house. There are new characters popping up every day, like freshman Congressman Andrew Ogles of Tennessee, who yesterday admitted that the international relations degree he says he got from Middle Tennessee State University was actually a degree in liberal studies. He also claimed to be an economist. Turns out he took one community co college economics class and got a C in it. But um, <laughs> so he claims he made a mistake on his resume and then uh, took a page from George Santos when a reporter tried to get him to talk about it. How did you forget what your major was in college? Sir, don't you think voters deserve an explanation? Okay. Sorry. How are you? Congressman, we can stop right here and talk to you if you're, you're willing to talk to us. I like that strategy, try to pretend the reporter isn't there. Like, uh, <laughs> is someone talking? I don't, I don't, I hear something, but meanwhile, remember that story about George Santos being a drag queen? Well, now there's a drag queen that's being George Santos. <laughs> That, by the way, that performer's name, drag name, anyway. Drag name is Meatball, which is a shame, because that was going to be my drag queen name. And, uh, <laughs> but I think we owe a debt to George Santos. See, he finally, he's given us something to finally agree on. Democrats, Republicans, and independents all agree that Santos should not be a congressman anymore. There's a new survey that says 66% of New York voters want him to resign. Um, the other 34% are him in a variety of wigs and mustaches. <laughs> 
Right now, the only people who want George Santos to remain in office are the people who work for him and late night talk show hosts, because to us, he's gold. So I thought it might be nice to catch up with George. We haven't seen him in a, a few weeks, and I think we have him, uh, uh, George? Uh, George? Yeah, let's see. Uh, Can you hear got, us? Uh, two boxes of Samoas uh -huh. here and uh, four George? boxes of Thin Mints. So that'll be, uh, well, let's just call it, uh, let's call it an even $5,000, all right? Okay, wait, George, uh, what are you up to there? George? Uh, hi. I what are you doing? This, uh, I'm out on this beautiful day just dialoguing with my constituents. Well, it, it looks kind of like you're posing as a Girl Scout to sell cookies. <laughs> that sounds crazy. You sound crazy. Well, oh. What are you doing? George. <laughs> George, uh, George, don't run. I wanted to ask, you know, you claimed you got married on Long Island. There's no record of it. People have been looking for the records. <laughs> well, of course there's no record. The records were destroyed when the volcano erupted, Jimmy. Wait, a volcano erupted on Long Island? Yeah. I don't really want to talk about this because my mother was killed in the volcano. Oh my God. Okay, she was, she passed away dead from the lava. So if you have a shred of human decency, please respect my privacy at this very difficult time, Jimmy. But wait, you claimed your mother died on 9-11. I never said the 9-11, I just said a 9-11. <laughs> okay, well. A little bit from Whitey? Uh, no, that's Whitney, Whitney Houston. Okay, wait, hey, hold on a second, George. I can't do this right now. I'm late for my meeting with Tyler Perry. He's making a movie about me. Uh, well, oh, what? He's making a movie for, for you, with you? Yeah, it's called Medea's List. Uh -huh. I wrote it about my black grandmother surviving the Holocaust. Wait, <laughs> hold on, is it a true story? The Holocaust? No, the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's true-ish. It's, uh, it's a Jewish true-ish. <laughs> Are you, a, can I ask, are you okay, Congressman? I cut my way through the jungles of Cambodia. I can get my way through this. <sighs> you fought in the Vietnam War? Yes, I did. And we lost a lot of good men out there, including my mother. Hey, hang on a minute. <laughs> That's not, what, is, what is going on here? Hold, hold on, are you, did you just buy a puppy from an Amish guy with a fidget spinner? <laughs> George, what is going on with that puppy? What, what puppy? You... What puppy are you even talking about? I, the puppy that we just saw a second ago. Why would you? George, Sir. George, I'm just trying to ask you. CSI Miami, I need to commandeer this sidecar. He's not with CSI Miami. George, you haven't answered any of my questions about the volcano or the cookies or the puppy or any of this stuff, George. I don't have time for this right now, Jimmy. I gotta get this thing up to 88 miles an hour. I'm gonna go back to 1975. I'm gonna get my lava-covered mother and take her to the enchantment under the sea dance. Let's hit it, Pepe. Okay.